So I don't know, I feel like I'm in two, two time in the call. <laughs> Am I yeah, two sure. She's going to come back, I guess. Okay, I guess. She'll come back at. Okay, so I'm in the call now. Can you guys hear me? Uh, we can hear you, but we can't see you. <laughs> Sorry? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, okay, but I, mean, I think it's okay. <laughs> oh, oh you're going to do an audio. Uh huh? You're going to do an audio. Yeah, because it's it's not the, the the camera is not working properly. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so if it's okay with you guys. Yeah. So, uh, uh Robert, can you open the camera? <laughs> yes. yes. I thought this this was uh, going to be live. Oh. Can you hear? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's gonna work. But let's see if it's gonna work. Yeah, yeah, we can see you. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, right. so, uh, so Robert, uh, this is Hodan. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Hi, Hodan. Okay. So this is uh, this Robert. He's uh, one of the leaders of uh, Swahili Port. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so Robert, this is Hodan. Uh, she's the founder of uh, Dory Lion Success. She's a consultant. Uh, she has been working with uh, Oracle and uh, other big companies in the Middle East. So I requested her uh, to come live and uh, train us about sales. Uh, we guys have some challenges in terms of selling and everything, getting clients, everything. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to hand over to Hodan to start the program. Okay, okay. okay. All right, so how many people are we having in the call? Uh, so far, uh, the participants we have right now are about six. But some of us are listening to us, so this is uh, projected live. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you are talking to many people. Sorry? You are talking to many people. They are in a room, so there are a lot of people there. <laughs> here. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to bring the, yes. So, okay, so first of all, thank you very much uh, for um, inviting for incredible and amazing questions to be asked. And um, this is a very relevant for the, uh, the, uh, the um, in general. So we need to actually, I do run workshop around this stuff, you know, that you're asking, which is really relevant and it's really important. So some of the questions, I, I will not necessarily go through all of the 14 questions, but I will pick some of them and I'll try as much as possible to congest with the, the, the what it's called, um, on the time that we have, okay? So I will try to keep it as much as I can get on the questions, all right? So if I go, uh, so the how, how to increase sales through digital media. Well, that it's alone is a very big topic. <laughs> uh, and it has a, what it's called, um, different ways that you can actually um, uh, sell yourself through uh, social media, internet, uh, you know, digital, uh, world so there you could you could um, position yourself in uh, what it's called a Facebook you can position yourself in the LinkedIn 
but everything comes down to where is your client if you do not know where your client is better off to stay away from social media or digital marketing in general okay so how you sell yourself in digital uh, world is uh, by knowing your client. So I will be keep saying that a lot on your questions. So the more you know your client, easier for you to sell to your clients. What do I mean? Is for example, uh, let's say you having uh, you selling a car. Okay, and the car is a uh, Ferrari, okay? What Ferrari is, is expensive, it's luxury, it has a beautiful noise, um, it goes very fast, isn't it? Now, it is extremely expensive. you know all about uh, who's feel who wants to feel important and for your product okay and how he dress where does he eat how he lives is a family person or is a um an, a bachelor is a um, um, that you give to your client. Okay, so that's the summary of first question second question how do you grow yourself the way you grow in your cells one already mentioned the digital mar uh, marketing you can get your customer your digital you know you can grow your sales through digital marketing and also it comes to what product you're selling so you can actually also package your product in a different way so it's hard to just say it through just how do you grow your sales blank like that but for instance let's say you having a product like um, uh, a mobile app okay and your mobile app produces, for instance, um, it helps you get jobs. Okay. So you, 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 you have created an, uh, uh, an app that helps you produce uh, jobs to people that are looking for jobs. Okay. So there's two ways you can generate revenue or sell for your app. One, who is your client is one client you have is the ones who are looking for employees isn't it and another part is the the people that are looking for jobs okay so you need to do two marketing at the same time so you sell on the two ways so you're selling to your uh your clients that are trying to come into your using your app to actually find a job and then you having a clients a, a clients that are looking to get the best talent that they can use for their jobs for their business isn't it so now you have two channel all right now you can choose to say that um the the employee uh, the the guys that are looking for a job they can come to use the app for uh, what it's called uh, for free. 
so they can just give you the best talents that you can recruit for that app. And then you can decide, I'm gonna charge the people that are looking for these employees, uh, for those uh, talented people to work for their business, okay? Now, if you are clever enough, you can also create a kind of a, a, a third revenue stream where you're selling advertisement. So it's, again, it's you need to look at your product or your services of how you can grow your sales. There are so many ways you can grow your sales, okay? So one is the social media, another is picking up the phone and cold calling, Another one is really targeted marketing to your clients. You can uh, organize an event and invite those particular clients that is suiting. If you don't have money, then that's not suitable. Another way you can go on the real media and talk in the real Zines, uh, podcast, you the ways you can do it without. Uh, I hope that is helpful. How do I find the right customer that will be my product? Again, this is if we go back into the first uh, question, how can I sell it through digital marketing? It comes again the same way. If you, you know your client, they are, you also know, find them. So if if you, if, you, if we're selling uh, what it's called, the um, uh, uh, Ferrari, they are rich, they're probably playing a golf somewhere, isn't it? Uh, if it's, uh, if it's uh, what it's called, uh, uh, the sport guys love it, so you probably would look for the sport you know, areas, uh, Ferrari. So you need to understand in, in, in a one way that you look through your own customer's eye. So the more you know, the better you can find them. Now, when you're saying, how do I find the right customer that will buy, before you create any product or services, you need to know there's a demand, there's a need, there's a gap. So what I do is that I do game-changing program. So the game-changing program is all about how do you take your product and make it more game changer. So how do you actually create that ripple effect over to your clients? Increasing your value, increasing your value that you produce to your customer. So how do you produce to your customer the value? So whatever cost you put, they would see. Okay. So to the, I am always disappointed when the customer reject my service. Something is happening here. Okay. So uh, so how will I? Sorry, I I am always disappointed when customers reject my services. What do I do to overcome this feeling? This is a very good question, by the way. I'm just going through the question. First of all, rejection is a good thing, okay? Reason being, it's a good thing, that means it was not meant for you in first place. So when you get a customer to reject you, it's actually, you need to look at it in, from a perspective that is a good thing, okay? Now, if it happening consistently, that means, is that your right customer? Are you targeting correctly? 
is that the you know the the is your approach second question is it your approach the right approach that you're taking toward your customer okay so i hope that answered the question so guys if if you the people that ask these questions just let me know if it makes sense to you all right so now the rejection is simple as if you are bringing if you're able to connect your customer right you will not have rejection but if your customer is resonating with you and you're talking about or what you're trying to sell to them of course they will reject you rejection means i don't get you you're not talking my language you're not speaking with me what you're producing what you're providing is not my you know i don't have a need for that so you need to evaluate your approach and the way you are uh if, if the client is your uh, for you because it's not always that we try to sell toward to the customer it's always both way so the way you want them they need to think of the product i'm bringing i'm actually solving a problem that they have so if a customer is rejecting you that means that you're not solving their problem so you need to think in that the more you actually clear with it the better you will be able to have a communication with your client how will I know if the client can afford to buy? That's a very good point. So, um, I had this conversation with one of my clients. Is he he was underselling himself? So the value he was so excited. It was like, oh my god, I'm, you know, my clients that keep buying from me, you know. But then he was saying, but I cannot reach my you know my cost so my cost was higher than my my product the, uh, what it called the, the selling what he was selling for so we 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 evaluate so there is a called uh what it called what was called the product uh pricing or service pricing it has to map to your market so how much it costs you to produce X amount of something, okay? So you shouldn't go too high and you shouldn't go too low. And one of the ways you know if you are selling the price or right or correctly is actually making a quick research with your customer. So how much is it costing right how much is it costing them right now to solve the problem that they are currently having? So the solu the solution you're producing has a problem, isn't it? So the problem is costing them right now and not solving it. So you need to know how much is in them that they don't solving the problem. That's one way. Another way you can look what is the uh, the cost of the product in the marketplace. So if you have a competition, a competitor in the market already, he providing a cost to it. So if a customer telling you this is overpriced or this is too expensive, then he is benchmarking with someone. Okay. So you need to understand, so why did you increase your cost? Then it could be the quality is better, so your materials might be costing higher. Or if your service, maybe your skills is better, like it's more unique. Uh, your intellectual property is too expensive. So now you need to see, you know, how do you position yourself with the quality if you look at the uh, the ferrari that i took you have a ferrari you have toyota okay so who goes for ferrari the people that has the money 
because they want to be branded across with them with the 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 um, with the, the Ferrari, because if you driving a Ferrari, it means X, Y, Z. So they created such a strong brand around Ferrari. So the, the story that they, they tell about the brand, it resonates with the customers that has money, isn't it? So if you see Toyota, no matter how much they make it, the engine and everything great, at the end of the day, it's Toyota. It's meant for ex clients. Okay? So the rich person would not resonate with Toyota. Okay? The sport car wouldn't resonate with the, the Toyota. Okay? So I'm just giving you an example for you to have an idea how you, if you put in the, the, the price high, then the story behind the price has to make sense to your customer. Okay? So what was then the, the best way to pitch to investors who will buy into my idea? Okay, so investor. Investors, <clears throat> I always say this to, I will put it back to you. Um, if you were having a money today, okay? And someone comes to you and asks you, can I borrow money from you? Or can, can, can you give me your money and I will go and do something? What is the first thing comes to your mind? Oh, can, can this person actually take my money and really do what he do? He says he's going to do. So, the person probably that is coming to you knows you already, so you kind of know the person. But then when you actually meet the investor or met you in the past, and you're telling him, I need your, you know, 100K from you to, uh, I'm going to run for your, your money and grow your business, uh, your money for you, because I'm going to make your money work for you. And, and you don't pitch in a way that you don't show him how his money will be working for him. Because the, at the end of the day, investor is investing on you because he wants you to make his money grow for him. So instead of keeping his money in the bank, he wants to do favor for you and you doing favor for him. Okay? So the best way you pitch to an investor to buy your idea is first buy your own idea yourself first. When you able to believe that investors shouldn't invest into your business, you are already the step first step. Okay? So you need to believe in your own business before you go and meet with an investor okay so which stage you go and meet investor is another day discussion okay so this is very important. I have a chicken, but restaurants are not buying because they have existing suppliers and it is hard to get other restaurants who are going to buy my chicken. What I it's just man it's everyone needs it what wherever you go every like we consume chicken all the time okay how do you how do you uh sell a chicken to a supplier or to a restaurant it doesn't even look at the competition okay the question is how far have you gone to reach to your clients are you picking two clients two companies two suppliers or two restaurants 
or you actually tried across the whole continent, uh, the whole country. If you see the whole country is not reaching, then go to the neighbor country. But I can tell you, we have 40 million people living in Nairobi alone, 47 million people living in Nairobi, isn't it? So I am I'm disagreeing if you're telling me no one is buying my chicken because everyone wants to buy a chicken. Food industry is the best place to be because the need is always there. Everyone wants to buy it. Then question comes, how are you selling your chicken? Are you selling your chicken in a way that, uh, what it's called, um, are you selling your chicken in a way that it's, um, you're making it, you know, you shouldn't buy it? Or how you're selling it is really important. Your chicken. But I can tell you, you haven't talked enough to the suppliers that are there or the restaurants that, that, are, that, that there are. And it's not Kenya enough, there's a neighbor country that are desperate to have a chicken. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> if you want, I can connect you to guys too, who wants chicken. So when I'm presenting to Sandra, okay, no, I, you know, it's a professional. Like the dress is a very professional. So as you go into any any other business meeting, you need to dress according to a business code dress. So yes. It matters. If you go to flip flop, I don't know. And it's again, it's it depends on the investors. If the investor comes with a flip flop, I don't know. But I would say to be safe side, to always have a business code dress. So if you're going to meet an investors, it's really important. So um I'm trying to get if I can manage to do the few more questions. Is it always right to ask the customers or I do my production without much research? So if you don't make a, a research, how do you know if this product or service is needed? So if you if you don't if you don't make the, the the research, how do you know who's your client and who's not? In any product that you do, it's extremely important that at least at least if you don't want to do a big research, just make small research that allows you to create around that and test into the market. I even tell to um, my guys is that first of all, try to you know go and sell before you create your product. If you get even two people buying from you without having the product developed, I'm telling you that product is gonna be the next Uber. So. If you can go ahead and sell the idea with a presentation or a demo or a, a prototype stage, sell it before you create the actual product. And when they buy from you, you know this is the actual product you should go after. And when you are a startup and you are in early stages in your business, Never look at perfectionist. Go test, try, go renew, build, rebuild, do it again, go and you know, get the feedback as you go. Don't say this is what I'm, you know, this is the only thing I'm having. You all the time developing and you're growing. Okay? I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, I'm easily demotivated. What can I do to be more motivated to sell my service? And this is again, 
your why has to be bigger than what you're doing. So why you're doing has to be bigger than what you're doing. What are you doing? So your purpose behind what you're doing has to be huge. Then you're motivated. So for for example, if you enter to a business world because you want to make money, you will get very fast bored. But if you go to a business, you know, creating that product because you want to really make difference in other people's life or the, 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 what you're trying to solve is really going to make some changes, then go for it. That you will know the why is big enough. So your purpose of what you're doing, even simple like, you know, I'm doing this for my kids or I'm doing this for my parents, or I'm doing this for my community, or, you know, these are things that really um, grow in you and that wakes you up in the morning. What I, what, what I do, I do it because I really believe sincerely, if we have more businesses, we have more jobs, we have, what it's called uh, less war, less poverty. Okay, so and I really, really sincerely doing what I do because of this. That's why uh, you see me every day doing, you know, helping them, coming with you guys, telling you how you can actually better your business and increase more businesses into Kenya and hopefully the rest of Africa. Because I believe Africa is the next uh, place to be. Okay, guys, so I think I'm wrapping up. I went over five minutes. So I hope that was helpful. Hi. Are you guys still there? Yes, we are here. We are here. Um, yeah? You guys, okay. Yes. Uh, actually, the okay. question is really, really intense. I, I try to make it so short as uh, possible, you know. <laughs> I hope that was a useful answer. Yeah. Yes, really I, I, I answered your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of points that I've learned today. Yeah, I think I I asked a question on data. I don't know if you saw it. There's a time I someone called me, but I asked a question also on data, on how people can also use the data, you know, to leverage on their sales and marketing. Yeah, I think that one is also very useful. I, I heard that you tackled it, that market research is very important, so. It's very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, to me, I've learned a lot today. Yeah. We learned a lot today. because I, okay. do, I do market research. So normally every, every time you need to collect data to make more informed decisions. So also this, this one goes hand in hand with doing your business, you know, you need to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as we go, we consistently ask for feedback from your clients. Consistently yeah. get feedback from your clients. Whatever you develop, whatever you do, you keep answers, you know. Go back to the customer, what they think about this. Okay, how was your experience? How they felt? How, you know, keep going back to it and get, at, uh, you know, more uh, questions from them, you know. So the more you can actually tune it as you go, perfect it is ah, that's fantastic yeah so for me i'm happy to be in this session maybe abdi can add something yes abdi unmute abdi unmute okay are we done or we have more questions <laughs> <laughs> that's all what we ask Okay, okay. Um, it was really awesome. It was really awesome. It was nice presentation. Uh, we have been waiting for you eagerly since yesterday for the past two days. I appreciate it. You know, um, such training um, costs a lot of money, but because, uh, but because you have the heart uh, to help the youth in Mombasa, uh, we thank you for that and uh, we hope to see you again in the future. Definitely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ruth. Sorry? Ruth? Um, there's Ruth. I think she's muted. Ruth? 
Yeah, she's. I think she's more. Okay, yeah. I can see her. Okay. 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 Uh, thanks a lot, Abon. Uh, hold on. Thank, Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.